Yo team, right, we've got an awesome topic today. We're going to talk about being with our feelings, but also the fact that when we're doing that, we don't always have to be Zen. I think I've spoken to a lot of people now who think the way that we kind of process our emotions is by sitting down and meditating and making shapes with our hands and breathing. And, you know, that's a beautiful thing. And I don't want to ever say that that's not an incredible thing to do. And it is. And it looks like the most important thing to know if we're going to be with the experience of our um senses and our feelings and our emotions it is to do so kind of outside of the world of story and concept to drop below that level and into the body to be able to feel what's happening like in our in our belly and in our arms and in our neck and kind of be there at the level before the story and um, that's a really amazing thing to do and there are times where the energy that's in our body it may need to be met kind of where it is so the first thing I'll say is that through everything I'm going to say today, the centerpiece of this is, is the breath, whether we're sat still on the sofa, whether we're running, whether we're, whatever it, we happen to be doing to help us shift this. Well, not, it's not even about shifting, but meet this energy where it is and to actually witness it and to see it in all its beauty. The breath is always at the center of that. So um, let me explain what I mean. For so many of us, we haven't realized that it's safe for us to be with the experience of our emotions. You know, we all know this deep down. We've all we've all been that three or four year old child who didn't judge, judge our feelings or make them wrong, where we were just sad and we were in the deep, rich experience of sadness. And then we were in the deep, rich experience of joy. And we just did think like if it made sense to us to dance when we were feeling joyful, we just danced. And I've met so many people for whom when allowing joy, they're, they're kind of restricting the somatic experience in their body. They're not dancing. They're not moving. They're not doing the things that just kind of come naturally to us when we're, when we're kind of outside of our head and in our body. And, and dancing is such a beautiful expression of this. And whether we're sitting on the sofa or whether we're dancing, we're doing the same thing. We don't have to be Zen all the time when we're kind of being with our experience. And, and it might be sadness. It might be grief. We might feel this kind of beautiful urge to cry you know and tears as it looks to me tears are a, they're messengers from beyond right they're they're like a conduit of this deeper energy and many of us have heard things like you know boys don't cry or we've but we've, we've grown up in a household where um we were taught that crying was was weak for example but it's not it's a beautiful part of the of the process and particularly if we're if we're in a process of healing knowing that these energies can be met in all these different ways looks very, very beautiful and really powerful to me, right? Maybe it's anger. Maybe we want to go out into the woods and get that primal scream out, right? Maybe it's pounding the pavement, it's running. Maybe it's going to one of these places where you can break stuff um, so you don't have to break your stuff at home and get that energy out. There is nothing wrong or bad about any, about any emotion. And when they're in their pure sense, when they're in their pure raw form, right? They're all completely beautiful. We end up in trouble when we add story and, and concept on top of them. But go and get the energy out. It's such an incredible thing. And whatever you're doing, however you're being with your emotions, know that they have their own deep intelligence, right? They, they will shift in their own time. None of them are, perma are permanent, but they they want to be honored. They just want to be felt. And the breath is the center point through all of these incredible practices or or kind of bodily somatic elements of, of this. And I think it's something that's just kind of missed a lot, actually, innocently. Many of us, we we don't realize that there are these other options on the table and and we might kind of sit down to meditate and breathe. And it, and it just kind of, it isn't, it isn't quite getting to it. It isn't, it isn't quite there if you if you think about the world of nature if you if you watch um, animals if they go through a difficult experience or something traumatic perhaps they're chased for a while by a predator and they then they get away once they're on their own and when it's safe to do so they go through um, a very somatic experience it often involves shaking or some kind of stamping um, and they they just, they're so in tune with what their system needs that it kind of happens naturally. Now, you are too, you are too. Like I said, you have you were that young child who just didn't have any of these ideas around, oh, well, I can't do this and I can't shake it, I can't do those things. And and look, I get it. We 
it's it's not the wisest thing to do perhaps to walk uh, into work and to scream and shout so it's okay to put these things on hold for a while but when we can get out into the woods run scream go and um go and do all of that stuff that would have been so natural to us you know 15 or 20,000 years ago out there as a hunter gatherer or whatever a small community whatever was happening right we wouldn't have been we wouldn't have been worrying about this stuff if we'd have been chased by a tiger and we got away we would have naturally been breathing we would have been screaming to get that out we would have been sitting around the campfire and cathartically telling the the kind of the story of what happened and then releasing it releasing it into the past where it belongs right we would be staring at the sky looking at the stars all these things are incredible gifts that we've been given gifts that we've been given and you know you can watch these things play out from the seat of of you from who you really are from the awareness and the witness space you know from the from the i amness that's the seat of who you are that's the place from where you can allow anger to move through allow grief to move through and they will alchemize they will they will transmute into something but they'll do it in their own time they'll do it in their own time so um yeah as you go about your week this week breathe and perhaps consider are there places where when i feel emotions coming i'm shallow breathing or i'm stopping myself from crying or i'm pushing things down are there things that you could do that feel opening and expansive to you is it going for a run is it is it going for a good scream like what it, what is it that's going to kind of allow you to break through this kind of energy energy that you're in and and just know that it it doesn't require us to be zen all the time yeah there's nothing off nothing off the table here um all these energies are beautiful and and you can handle all of them they're all safe and uh yeah i just think that's something that we don't talk about enough all right team i hope you have the most beautiful week i can't wait to hear what you hear in this and uh perhaps something new that you try this week that you haven't tried before trust your body trust trust that wisdom in you it's uh it's still there it, it never went anywhere all right team see you soon Thank you.